What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Sci Guys Football Forum in visual format again. So we're here to talk about some Thursday night football action. Um, we're just going to go through some of the fantasy matchups. Uh, we got Carolina visiting the Houston Texans. Um, Tad, I don't know how long this episode is going to be because I think it's one sided. What are you talking about? This is going to be a barn burner. This is the game of the year right here. Honestly, hike. Hike. honestly, on. you joke that it's going to be a barn burner, but it could be based on what Houston has been doing the past couple of weeks. They're putting up a lot of points, surprisingly. Um, with but what I think with what quarterback <laughs> they doing that, way? that is true. Yeah. In case you didn't know, Tyrod Taylor is not playing on Thursday night football to Rod Taylor, whatever. I'm not, I'm not correcting anyone. <laughs> T square. He is not playing on Thursday night football. It is going to be the rookie out of Stanford. Davis Mills will be making his first career start against a very up and coming Carolina defense. I mentioned a lot of these stats in the previous episode. They're tops as far as le they're, they're the fewest points allowed fewest yards allowed i think they have the second most sacks or the most sacks i can't remember these exact numbers but they're at the very top of a lot of these defensive categories and playing against a rookie quarterback a third round rookie quarterback on top of that like maybe he'll wow us and he'll completely surprise us but i don't see that in davis mills unfortunately i think this carolina panthers will be able to control every aspect of the houston offense do you think differently tad i absolutely agree with you and here's another Another fun fact is actually the Carolina Panthers already in week two are the only team on defense so far in fantasy football to score double digit points at both week one and week two. So this defense is nothing to sneeze at people. They almost had defensive rookie of the year and correct me if I'm wrong. The safety, Jeremy Chin. I know for mm -hmm. sure his yep. last name is Chin. I don't know if it's yep, Jeremy Chin. You're correct. Jeremy You're Chin. correct there. So they have him. They have Brian Burns. They have, mm, I'm going to screw this up. You tour gross. Uh, you Turk tried. Gross Matos, I yeah, tried. yeah. I tried, and now and now people get to visually see me defeated. It's just so great. I'm, I'm so exactly. happy we made the switch. Exactly, exactly. exactly. So much for my self confidence, but yeah, no, I'm with you. Um, unfortunately, this is just the case of Thursday night games. A lot of the matchups just aren't that great. Uh, but that's not to say there aren't some fancy gems in there. It's actually one of the gems that surprised me the most is all the reading and research I've done today. Everyone's like, look at this guy's a wide receiver too. Maybe a flex option. I see this guy as a borderline wide receiver number one, and that's DJ Moore. You talked about it with this kind of surprise up-and-coming young Panthers team. Who's the leader of this team right now? It's Sam Darnold. He's finally had the revival that I, I can't say all of us were hoping for, but I think most of us were hoping that Darnold would kind of have this second chance work out in Carolina, and so far it's happening. You mentioned him in yesterday's video of a potential quarterback you should pick up in fantasy. Well, who's he throwing to? It's DJ Moore. He's put up double digits in both week one and week two. You look at the amount of volume he's getting. And look, I know people are going to say, well, yeah, no, duh. Because, of course, the Houston Texans defense is going to be bad against the, you know, after what they did against the Jags. But you look at what they did against the Browns. I know Jarvis Landry went down early, but they shut down Rashard, uh, Rashad Higgins. They shut down Austin Hooper largely. I know Hooper got a couple points. It was kind of a dependable tight end there. And honestly, if it wasn't for a great play by Demetric Felton, which, by the way, go back and listen to a couple episodes of Desai Guys around draft season, we both called it Felton would be a sleeper in the draft. Looks like we're right there. Both so, of us and Ryan Dirud is very high on Demetri Felton as well. So, yeah. You, yeah. UCLA, you know, wide out, running back, kind of hybrid. I'm telling you, he's going to be, especially with Jarvis Landry out, Keep an eye on Felton as a potential waiver wire pickup, but that's we're saving that for next week. So going back to what they did against the Browns, though, is they largely did a good, good job of shutting down the Browns once their top weapons went out. Carolina has the same tier of receivers that the Browns do without OBJ and Jarvis Landry. So, or, sorry, not Carolina. Or, excuse me. Yes, Carolina does have that same tier. Houston did a good job of reeling it in here, buddy. Come on, what's sorry, going on? <laughs> Houston, I, it's late. Houston did a good job of shutting down the Browns' second-tier, third-tier receivers. So, DJ Moore is not a gimme receiver to succeed this week, but I think he still will because you look at the amount of targets he's had with 19 targets over two weeks. He's proven to be a favorite target of Sam Darnold. And, look, going to the other side the, with the other offense, Brandon Cooks. The Texans, like we said, are probably going to get smoked this game. What does that mean? They're going to fall behind fast. They're going to fall behind early. That means a lot of passing. So I don't trust David Johnson. I don't trust Philip Lindsay. I sure as shit do not trust Mark Ingram. But I do trust Brandon Cooks. 
because with a carousel quarterbacks his entire career, he has put up consecutive 1,000-yard seasons again and again and again. So Brandon Cooks is the very definition of dependable. I like him a lot, and Davis Mills will be looking his way a lot. So Brandon Cooks and DJ Moore, both receivers that if you have them, I think you should start them. Yeah, I, I agree with both of those. The Brandon Cooks one, I'm not as sold on. Really? I, that's fair. But here's the th- Sorry to interrupt you, but here's the whole thing with Brandon Cooks is he's constant. I feel like we've been saying that about Brandon Cooks for the past two years. Of like Every week, we're just like, yeah, I just don't know. This seems like a t- tough matchup, but he always seems to perform. Stop doubting him. Start him. I'm telling you, you're not going to regret it. And See, so do, it's fine. I, I, so I don't mind Brandon Cooks maybe long-term this season because he's their de facto number one option, but I think the Carolina Panthers are going to make a concerted effort to make sure that he is doing nothing in the passing game. So maybe he'll get, you know, a couple targets, a couple receptions here for limited yards, but it's not going to be worth putting in your starting roster, especially when we have a full slate of games on Sunday and obviously the Monday night game. So it's not worth it to start Brandon Cooks this week, at least. I think for sure, I think there's definitely some dependability and he could help you out in future matchups, but I just don't like him for this particular game. I think Carolina's defense just a little bit more younger, hungrier. They're going to get good pressure on Davis Bills. They're going to rattle him. He's going to make some errant throws. It's not going to be a good outing for him or the Houston offense in general. Whereas on the flip side, uh, I already brought him up before, but Sam Darnold, I think, is going to have a very career year here with the Carolina Panthers. I just he's, he's just going to continue it this week with the short week against Houston. I think he's going to put up very good numbers. Christian McCaffrey, I think, is an every week starter, so we don't need to bring him up too much. DJ Moore, I completely agree with you. I think he's becoming a very Rich McCaffrey. He sucks. Don't start him. <laughs> um, DJ Moore, I completely agree with you. I think he's going to emerge as being one of the best receivers in the league. He's just going to get a little bit more notice, especially with the attention that Darnold is with the new team. I think it's just going to bring more attention to DJ Moore. He's not going to be as underrated of a receiver as a lot of people think he is. Um, fantasy players already know that he's a very good receiver, but I think he's just going to solidify that this year. Obviously, you got the reconnection of Robbie Anderson and Sam Darnold from the New York Jets days. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a deep bomb to Robbie Anderson. He gets a very big score. Um, he's going to put up some yards um i wouldn't be surprised if they get so ahead that chuba hubbard somehow breaks oh, away and he scores go. a touchdown late in the game possibly like it's very possible i really just don't like houston to do anything in this game carolina's going to control it from the opening kickoff and it's just yeah it's going to be very one-sided i just don't see like i said i know you're high on brandon cooks but i'm like i said i think he hit more for long term this week i think he's going to get shut down more like i said it wouldn't surprise me if houston gets shut out this week like I, I really feel that much confidence with wow. Carolina this week. You, that's very you are much higher in this Carolina defense than I am. I'm not saying they're a bad defense at all. I, I I mean we both agree this is a good, promising young defense, but exactly that. They're young. And I think the big thing for me is that because they're young, they're riding this adrenaline right now. So it's the start to the season. They're riding the momentum. They're going with it. Maybe if this was like, you know, middle of the season and it's like they need to sustain that success and it's like maybe they suffered a loss here or two there, but they're undefeated. Uh, sorry, no, I don't think they're undefeated. I think they're one and one, right? I believe No, I believe they're two and oh. They're two and oh. Okay, well, there you go. I'll, I'll pack fact check you on that Keep going. yes please fact check me on that one but if they are defeated then it's like live, <laughs> if they are defeated then it's like the fact that it's like they're undefeated too they're writing that's like okay let's keep this going let's keep this train moving beat the Jets and beat the Saints. there you go yeah, there you go so i think they're riding that momentum they're staying on that hype train that's like we could beat anybody sort of thing they're waiting for their chance to play you know the defending super bowl champions at tampa bay eventually obviously their divisional opponents so it's like i think they have all that momentum on them where it's like i think there's just going to be amped up especially on the short week too that's like i think it's just going to carry over so that's why i'm a little bit higher on them right now but yeah maybe a little bit later obviously things are sort of going to align themselves other teams are going to improve they may regress a little bit but yeah on the short week i really Really like Houston in this matchup. I disagree with you because, again, like you said, what what you see as a strength, I see as a weakness. They're going in on a short week, and what team has ever performed extraordinarily well on a Thursday night? Very rarely does that happen because they have That's so fair. little time to, That's to, fair. to prepare. And normally, I go, yeah, you're right. They are pretty high. They're going into this game with that adrenaline. They're not playing the Buccaneers. They're not playing the Chiefs. They're playing the Texans. Like, I, I would be hyped if I was a Panthers player. I'd be like, get this game out of my way already. I want to move on with my season. So, no, I don't see any hype being a huge factor there. So, I, maybe you're right. I, I disagree with you there. But, and also, before we sign off, I just have to give a shout out to some of the deeper leagues. If you're in a 14 uh, man league, and what idiot would be in a 14 man league at Murr? 
Um, yeah, you you forced me in one. How dare you? <laughs> I didn't force you. I gave you an option to opt out. So Dude. that is on you, buddy. That yeah, is I'm on not, you. I'm not gonna be that guy. Though. We need to do that. <laughs> but you're gonna complain about it. So oh, you're gonna be that guy. <laughs> yeah, of course. I'm gonna be. I've always been that guy. Come on. But if you are in a deeper league and you are hurting for a tight end and you need to find a guy that could potentially at least score a touchdown for you this week. Honestly, I think uh, uh, the Panthers tight end. Let me look up his name real quick. Dan Darnold. Arnold. Dan Arnold. Dan, Dan Arnold. 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 Not Dan Darnold. <laughs> Dan Darnold. Yeah, I was getting the, quarter, <laughs> the quarterback in the tight end mix up. Dan Arnold. So he had four targets uh, week one, three targets week two. I know that doesn't really scream amazing to anyone, but that's a steady amount of targets for a tight end. So if he scores that touchdown that's a six seven point performance right there for you so if you're really hurting for a tight end look out for him so like we said honestly fancy wise this isn't the sexiest matchup of the week but we're hoping and this will be a recurring segment for the Desai guys as we go on throughout the season so hopefully with some better matchups on thursday nights we can uh make some more exciting segments for you guys but for now we hope we informed you as much as possible for this upcoming absolute Barn burner with Houston Texans versus the Carolina Panthers. As always, guys, thanks for tuning in.